Let's go on to a different area, and that has to do with biogeography. And if I can quote you, you say, much biogeographical data, however, has little to do with Darwinian evolution and does not provide special evidence for common ancestry. It can be easily explained as the result of migration and continental drift. Two conventional ideas accepted by virtually everyone in this debate. And, and that's sort of responding to the idea that biogeography supports it. But I think for people who are listening, that may even be already diving into the weeds. And if you could sort of take us back out to the airplane level, give a sort of overview of what the argument would be for supposedly universal common ancestry from biogeography, and then take us down lower into some of the details about why there's evidence against universal common ancestry from biogeographical data. Sure. So, so what is biogeography? Uh, biogeography is the study of the distribution of organisms in both time and space uh, across the surface of the earth over earth's history. Okay. So evolutionary scientists will say that the way that we find organisms, the places that we find them over time are consistent mm -hmm. with their having evolved from common ancestors. Okay. So uh, they'll say that there's a congruity between biogeographic patterns, sort of where organisms have lived in the past on Earth, and evolutionary mm -hmm. patterns. And this continuity, they say, is, is, or this congruency is what you would expect if common descent were true. So the problem is that, again, you're dealing with a cherry picking of data, all right? A lot of the data that's biogeographical in nature and is said to support evolution um, really can be explained by, very easily by basic of uh, concepts like migration, plate tectonics, it doesn't provide any kind of special evidence for common ancestry. Um, okay. There are some examples, though, where it's very difficult to explain how organisms got to where they are today on Earth um, via some unbroken chain of ancestry going back to their parent group or their ancestral group. Okay. So, a good example of this, or I think one of the most uh, compelling examples of this, is the origin of South American monkeys. Uh, those are called platyrenes, and they're thought to be descended from old world monkeys from Africa, which are called catarines. So the okay. fossil record shows that monkeys have lived in South America for about 30 million years. So fine. The idea is that somehow African monkeys made their way to South America and migrated there and colonized South America, which led to... Um, uh, monkeys proliferating on South America, and they're, but they're originally coming from Africa. Okay. Okay. So the problem with the story is that plate tectonics has now shown us that South America was an isolated island continent from about 100 to, uh, or sorry, from about um, 80 million years ago to three and a half million years ago. Um, and because it was an isolated island continent that was separated from other continents by, say, you know, up to hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of ocean, open ocean. How then do you get the African monkeys to get to South America to populate it? Okay. It's a real biogeographical conundrum. If South American monkeys are in fact descended from African monkeys, then you have to explain yeah. how that evolutionary migration occurred. And it's very yeah. difficult to do that. Uh, one of the ways that it's done is through uh, what they call rafting hypothesis. They will actually propose that not just one, but at least two monkeys, or maybe I suppose one pregnant monkey, uh -huh. rafted across you know thousands of kilometers of open ocean from all the way from <laughs> Africa to South America okay. around 30 million years ago, which is when we see our first uh, monkey fossils in South America, or the genetic clock tells us that they diverged. So uh, somewhere around that time, there was like a, a giant storm, some monkey got caught up in the vegetation and it sailed all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and then colonized the South American continent. OK, now, mm. um, is it absolutely impossible? I wouldn't say it's absolutely impossible, but it's pretty improbable. OK, yeah. in fact, monkeys tend to have very high metabolisms, which means they need a lot of food and water in order to drink. And it's hard to yeah. imagine how they could find enough of that to survive this probably many week voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, yeah. it's, this is so unlikely that uh, some evolutionary biologists have called um, 
the uh, rafting hypothesis a sweepstake hypothesis, okay? Where basically they're, it's like winning the lottery when you're able to make this journey across the ocean. So okay. uh, to me, that when you're, when you're comparing something to winning the lottery, that is not a very compelling argument. It's showing <laughs> that you know, a, a, a very good stroke of luck is required in order for it to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And there's many examples of this from biogeography. Um, we have trying to explain how other species got to South America, like certain large rodents or bees or lemurs, um, how you're getting um, organisms in, in uh, Madagascar, uh, uh, how you're getting um, uh, elephant fossils on various islands, the existence of various freshwater frogs in certain oceanic island chains. There's lots of examples of difficulties explaining how organisms got to where they did using okay. uh, biogeography. And it's a, it's, a, it's a real problem for Darwinian theory, I would say, in common ancestry. Thank you for listening. Credible Faith is a global missions-minded apologetics ministry with content available in seven different languages across seven websites, German, Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. If you would like to support the global apologetics work of Credible Faith, go to CredibleFaith.org and click on the Donate icon. If you would like me to give an apologetics workshop or participate in a debate at your university, or if you would like me to give a Great Commission Missions Conference or Apologetics Conference at your church, get in touch with me through the Contact Us section of the Credible Faith website. You can also submit a request through the website to get Credible Faith's monthly email. If you are a native speaker of Russian, German, Italian, French, Spanish, or Portuguese, and if you notice that an essay from the English website is not available on the Credible Faith website for your language, feel free to get in touch with me about translating the essay, and I would read through your translated material for quality control and the desire to see content from the essay made available in your language. Thank you for listening, and have a great night.